says here, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I thought about titling this service, this sermon this morning, Jesus Christ is coming to town. <laughs> I thought you might get you carnal. So we're just going to title it this, Christmas is coming. Look at your neighbor and tell them Christmas is coming. Let's pray one more time that the Lord would just speak into our hearts. How many wants God to speak to us today? Amen. If that's your desire, that could be that wonder. It's better than a vehicle, Brother Gordon. If he had gave me a forewarning, I would have bought everybody a Hot Wheels car for them. But more planning. But God is good. Amen. God bless you. Lord, help me to do a good job in a short amount of time. Let everybody listen and be attentive in Jesus' name. And everybody shout, Amen. God bless you. You may be seated today is our prayer. A young boy was writing a letter to God about the Christmas presents that he wanted so badly. He started off, I've been good for six months now. But he stopped. And after a moment's reflection, he crossed out the six, simply wrote three. And yet another pause ensued, and he crossed out the three months and replaced it with two weeks. Still sitting there in hesitation, the young boy ripped the paper off the notepad, wadded it up, threw it in the garbage. He pursued to get up from the table and walk over to the family nativity scene that mom had placed so beautifully and he reached down to where Mary and Joseph was he picked up the figure of Mary proceeded to walk back to the table sit down at his little tablet and he started to write dear God if you ever want to see your mother again <laughs> It is hard to fathom for some of us that Christmas is a mere five days away from here. And each year I hear comments similar to these that Christmas is here already. It seems like it was just yesterday that we had Christmas. Man, I haven't done anything yet to prepare. I've got so much to do to get ready. The family's coming over. I'm going to get my shopping done early next year so I'm not in such a mad rush. <laughs> See, Christmas seems to sneak up on us, each and every one of us. It's kind of like a thief in the night, if you will. It comes when we least expect it. I mean, life is going on as usual, and then bam, all of a sudden, Christmas is here. See, I understand why, since it comes at a different date on the calendar every year. <laughs> oh, wait, I guess it does, it does. It. It's December 25th each and every year, and I can probably speak for every one of us, including our elders, that it has always been our entire lives on December 25th. But it still seems to sneak up on us. But I have a simple thought this morning that... It's a simple reminder to each and every one of us. And I know we are busy and I know our lives are chaotic. But Christmas is coming. Put up your tree, hang your decorations, wrap your gifts, cook your meals. Because Christmas is coming. Soon, some of us uh, look forward to it. Others do not look forward to it. But I, speaking for myself, I am very glad when Christmas comes. It reminds me of what a great family I have, what a great church I have, and more importantly, what a great God that I have. I look forward to celebrating this wonderful day, this wonderful season. I know we should celebrate it here alone, but we really put a focus in on it. The birth of Jesus Christ and what He has done for us. Our annual celebration of Christmas is truly a birthday party for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His arrival was longed for. His arrival was prophesied about. 
by men of God that informed the people that simply Christmas is coming. Isaiah 7 and 14 says, Therefore the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. See, the prophet Isaiah addressed the house of David and he speaks of a virgin being pregnant with a child and giving birth to a little baby boy. Isaiah was saying that this, saying this in the context of being a sign from God. He also was saying that this child would be referenced as Emmanuel, which means which is interpreted as God with us. Right, amen. 700 years later, approximately 700 years later, in the New Testament, we find in the books of Matthew and Luke the record of details involving this prophecy coming to fruition as the birth of Jesus transpires, saying that he was born of a virgin Mary and is the Son of God. And because he is the Son of God, Jesus is literally God with us. I tell you, for the people in the Bible days, they were looking for the physical arrival of Jesus Christ, their long-awaited Messiah. And when Jesus began to walk up and down the streets of Jerusalem and Galilee and Bethlehem and all the places He went, He did not cease to amaze them because everywhere He went, Christmas took place. There were signs, there were wonders, there were healings, there were miracles. People would say, what is going on? And they would begin to explain. It is Jesus uh, performing miracles again. It is Jesus uh, doing the great things again. In other words, it was great anticipation as Jesus came to town that Christmas was coming. It was a day of anticipation. Am I going to get to see Him? Will I get to touch Him? I may have to push myself through the crowd. And man, when we go to the Kelly's household, Mom's got a small house. I'd guess probably 1,100 square foot house. And we have about 35 people that goes to the side of that house. And, and I remember growing up, and I remember the traditions and all this stuff. And, and, and as the family continued to grow, the living room has so many gifts and stuff in it that you can't even get there. And in our, our family, we don't know what's under the tree. And, and I used to be one of the ones that would climb under there. And we what we would do, and now the older grandkids doesn't. You go under there and you everybody's different. You see a gift and you read the name and you call out the name and you just sling it. <laughs> and when Jesus comes to town... People would, I mean, it was total chaos because the multitudes would come, kind of like Christmas at the Kelly's. I mean, total chaos ensues, and some people ain't even brave enough to, 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 to go into the living room. Bunch of wimps, in laws, outlaws. But us that was raised, that's all we know when we come in there. And, and that's the same thing when Jesus was coming to town. It, I see the woman with an issue of blood. She said, Christmas is coming. I'm going to make my way through the crowd. I've got a need. I've got, I need a miracle to transfer. I need a gift from God in my life. I need Him to come to me. And I can see blind Bartimaeus as he hears the ruckus and all the uproar. He's saying, man, I hear so what's going on. And I can see him talking to his friends. And the friends are like, Christmas is coming to town for somebody. Something miraculous. And blind Bartimaeus began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I tell you, my brother and sister, we can have a longing, we can have an anticipation for that wonderful day when Jesus comes our way with a healing touch, with a miraculous touch. Christmas is coming to each and every one of us. And I want to be ready. Amen. Micah 5, 1 and 2 says this. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. And he hath laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon cheek. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrata, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. See, this prophecy reveals to us the birthplace of of the Messiah, and it is Bethlehem. As pointed out in a book, 100 Prophecy, and I quote, 
The prophecy is effective in a simple way. It eliminates all other cities, towns throughout the world as a place in which the Messiah could be born. It narrows the possibilities to one tiny village just south of Jerusalem. I tell you, Christmas is coming. If I may draw the following parallel from this prophecy, regardless of the size of town, home, or individual, Christmas is coming for each and every one of us. Doesn't matter what your past is, what your pedigree is, doesn't matter how big your bank account is or how small it is, Christmas is coming to everybody. The reason for the first Christmas is very simple. It is our scripture text, Luke 19 and 10. The Son of Man is coming come to seek and to save that which was lost. I tell everybody under the sound of my voice and everybody that listens on the web, I tell you to this morning that Christmas is coming for whosoever will. He came that everybody might have life and might have it more abundantly. You've got a Savior that wrote himself in flesh, died on the cross so that we can have life and so that we can have life more abundantly. It is an everlasting presence of God Almighty. It's the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. It is life and life more abundantly. Christmas is coming to whoever wants it. To an audience of just shepherds watching their sheep at night, the angel said in Luke 2, 10 through 12, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. To all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, and this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And to an audience worshiping the Lord on this Sunday morning, Pastor Jimmy simply says, Christmas is coming. Lay down your staffs, postpone your responsibilities, and get ready for Christmas because it is coming. It is the gift of salvation. Salvation. It is forgiveness of sins. It's your sins being washed away in a watery grave of baptism, calling on the name of Jesus. It is being filled with the Spirit in this body, this temporary home of the Holy Ghost. Get ready for Christmas. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let the responsibilities and the cares of this world hold you back. Pursue that promise. Pursue that calling. Long for that gift of Christmas, which is Jesus in a manger, which is Jesus in our hearts, which is Jesus on the cross. Christmas is coming to the church. Somebody shout, Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. My final point this morning is simply this. There is another Christmas that is coming for us. The first Christmas was for Jesus to save us from our sins. And it is still taking place this very moment. And it can take place for you. Maybe you have never been baptized in Jesus' name. You can experience a wonderful gift of having your sins washed away. Maybe you've never spoken in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. Maybe you've never spoken in another language as the Spirit of God gives you the utterance. And it's a wonderful promise for whosoever will this morning. That is Christmas that can come to you today. But my final point takes us to a future time. A time that has not transpired yet for any of us. And it's going to take place when Jesus comes to take His bride, to take His people home to be with Him up in heaven. So I close with this. Christmas is coming soon. In our busy lives of distraction, I ask us to slow down on this Sunday morning long enough to realize that Christmas is coming. I know where I'm standing today. I know I'm preaching to a church and, and I didn't see many visitors here this morning. So I'm preaching to a bunch of saved and sanctified folks that has experienced the first Christmas. But I want to tell you that there's coming a day that Christmas is going to take place again. And we must make ourselves ready. We must continually prepare ourselves for that great getting up morning when the Lord 
Father himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remaining shall be called up together to meet them in the airs. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. So I just bring a simple comforting message this morning. That Christmas is coming. Yeah. I get excited to think about Christmas. I get excited about thinking about going to heaven. I get excited about thinking about this body being changed from mortal to immortal, from corruptible. I get excited to think about I'm not going to write another check. I'm not going to sign another timesheet. I'm not going to do anything down here of this world's responsibility. But one of these days I'm going to hear my Savior say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I know Christmas is coming and I want to be ready. I don't want it to catch me unaware. I don't want it to catch me off guard. But I want to be prepared and planned to meet my Savior. Because Christmas, Christmas is coming. Matthew 24, 35 through 42. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other one left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal, the one shall be taken and the other one left. He said in verse 42, watch therefore for you know not the hour your Lord doeth come. I tell you my brother and my sister, Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. You need to watch and make yourselves ready. Now is the time to watch. Now is the time to prepare. Now is to be looking for Jesus to come back because Christmas Christmas oh, Christmas Christmas based on this parable half will be taken and half will be left. That isn't a good probability. Statistically speaking it means either the person to your left or the person to your right isn't going to make heaven. Statistically speaking, the person, people you walk down the aisles with and you see, statistically speaking, every other one, based on this parable, isn't going to make it. Statistically speaking, the people you sit with in the office or work with outside, whatever your occupation may be, every other person is not going to make it. I tell you, church of the living God, this morning, I know life is chaotic. I know life is full of stress and life is busy. And I know that our natural Christmas celebration sneaks upon us. But I tell you, there is a greater celebration to come. And I don't want it to catch me unaware. But I want to be watching. I want to be waiting. I want to be prepared. I know Christmas is coming. And this old boy wants to be ready for when the Lord comes to gather the bride of Christ. Christmas is coming. We've got to be ready. Amen. Revelations 3 and 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. He said, Hold fast. Hold fast. Life is going to get busy. The storms of life is going to rock your boat to and fro. You better hold fast to what you believe in. You better hold fast to the Word of God. You better hold fast to truth because every wind of doctrine is going to try to blow you down. Every kind of ideology is going to try to blow you down. Every kind of false religion is going to try to bring you down. You better hold fast because in the last days there are perilous times shall come and he's going to, the devil is going to try to convince even the very elect. But I tell you this morning that Christmas is coming. All you've got to do is hold fast. Just hold on a little bit longer. Keep worshiping a little bit longer. Keep trusting a little bit longer. I know you've been serving for years. Just hold fast. Christmas is still coming. Amen. Christmas is still 
God. coming. Yeah. Matthew 25, we read about the ten virgins, five wives, and five foolish. It is the, important to remember that according to Jesus, both the wise and the foolish were at one time initially prepared for the bridegroom's arrival. They were ready to, to see their bridegroom. They were ready to see Jesus, their Lord, coming back. But, but the time took too long and the preparation began to get lax. And it was a long delay and the bridegroom didn't come when they thought it would. In fact, both the wise and the foolish, the Bible says, fell asleep. And they were surprised by the announcement of the bridegroom's coming. All ten fell asleep. All ten were surprised. But the Bible tells us that there were five wise and five foolish. See, the foolishness of the five virgins was not found in their falling asleep or in the surprise of the announcement of the bridegroom's arrival. Their foolishness was found in their lack of forethought and not bringing enough oil to that day or for that delay. The only solution to prevent from running out of oil is to continually be renewed with the oil. Titus 3 and 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, we need to continually renew ourselves in the Spirit. We must hold fast to the promises of God that He has given to us. And we must, we must continually to serve diligently. We must endure until the end. We must pursue God with every ounce of strength and silence of us. We know Christmas is coming, but we've got to be continually renewed in the power of the Holy Ghost. Continually renewed in the presence of God and the Spirit of God, or else we will be like the fight foolish, and we will let our oil run out. How do we let our oil run out? I tell you how we let our oil run out. Church becomes a bore to us. Praying becomes a nuisance to us. And not only do we prevent or no, not only do we uh, uh, limit ourselves from coming to the house of God, but our daily relationship with God becomes non-existence. Uh, I tell you what happens. Uh, you had a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, but because of all the cares of this life, and because of the, de the delay in His return, uh, you become a little carnal and you, you start slacking on the spiritual things. And before you know it, years have transpired and years have gone by and your love for God is not where it used to be. But I'm here to remind the church of the living God today. I know some of you thought he would have come before 2000. Some of you thought he would have come in 1988. But we sit here, we stand here in 2015 and Jesus Christ has not come yet. But I'm telling you today with full confidence in the word of God and full confidence in my Lord that Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. He may come before this Friday or he may come another 50 years from now. But regardless of the situation, we must live this day. We must live this minute as though it were our last. Because one of these days, it will be our last day. It will be our last minute. And Christmas is coming. And I want to have oil in my lamp. I want to be ready. I want to be watching. I am holding fast to that promise. There's speculation about the wise virgins, apparent foolishness of and not sharing their oil. The common response seems to be that the wives could not share their oil with the foolish for fear that their own torches would burn out and their entire procession would be left wandering in the darkness. However, I point out a separate thought this morning. The unspoken truth is that we cannot give anyone the Spirit, no one the Holy Ghost. We cannot share our oil with anyone else. We can witness to them, we can testify to them, and we can even teach them the Word. But we are incapable of giving anybody the baptism of the Holy Holy Ghost. So my friend, we better make sure that we have the gift of the Holy Ghost for ourselves. We need to recognize and realize that it is a gift of God. It is a gift from God. And it is wrapped from a manger. It is wrapped from a cross. It is wrapped in a package from God Almighty. It is the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it is evidenced by speaking in other tongues. We need to have the oil in our lamp. 
lack of planning proved to be more than just an inconvenience. Between the time the virgins awoke to light their lambs, the foolish went out to purchase the necessary oil. See, I truly believe that on that rapture day, when the church is called up, there is going to be a, a plethora of people that runs to the store, if you will, that runs to the church, runs to the altars of their home. They're going to begin calling out and crying out to look for that oil that they once had, but it's going to be too late. See, the bridegroom's procession passed by. It was joined by only five virgins, and again, five were left. And going back to the statistical anomaly, only half the people made it. I tell you, I don't want to put my hands, I don't want to put my eternal life into just the, the, the hands of chance. But I want to know, I want to make sure that my calling and my election is sure. In order to be ready when Christmas comes, we need need to be ready before it ever gets here. If you want to make sure there is presence under the tree on Friday, you better go out to the store today or tomorrow or the next day. Because if you wait until the day of, the stores are shut, the stores are closed, it's too late. I tell you that the day when Jesus comes back, it is going to be too late. If you are not ready for Christmas, you're going to miss the great calling away of the church. I want to be ready I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready because Christmas is coming. 1 Corinthians 15, 52, 53, 55, 57. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It said in a moment, it said in a twinkling of an eye, it said in this very quick snap of the fingers, we're going to be changed. We're going to be taken. There's not going to be enough time at that moment to repent. It's not going to be enough time to be baptized in Jesus' name. It's not going to have enough time to go and get oil for your lamp. You better be ready. You better make yourself ready. You better live a life with anticipation that Christmas is coming. You better give your all to Jesus Christ today because Christmas is coming. You better give your heart and soul to Jesus. Jesus Christ because Christmas is coming. You don't know the day. You don't know the hour. But I tell you, Christmas is coming. The music comes this morning. Luke 12 and 40 says, Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Revelation 22 and 7 says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Jesus said, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keeps the sayings of the prophecy of this book. I tell you, everybody's not going to make it. Unfortunately, all of the church isn't going to make it because some people are just in it for the show. So I ask this question today. Are you ready for Christmas? You stand with me. Every eye closed. Hallelujah. There's hesitation in your mind, uncertainty in your mind about your eternal home. I'll tell you the first Christmas in the little stable of Bethlehem is the gift that enables us to be ready for the second Christmas that's going to take us to the streets of gold and gates of pearl. These altars are open for anyone that may have sin in your life. If you want to come and ask God to forgive you, there's a gift that these altars are in your pew. If you want to ask God to forgive you, there. There's a gift called forgiveness. 
Our Savior is faithful to forgive us of our sins when we ask Him. In your name, Jesus. You've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. We have water ready this morning. You can experience a great gift. And it is being born of the water. It is having your sins washed away. There's no other way to have your sins completely removed other than being totally sinful. It's a gift from God. And it's available to each and every one of us this morning. And I come to my final point. The greatest gift to mankind. The baptism of the Holy Ghost in Jesus Christ taking residence inside of our bodies. If you will, in the parable of the virgins, it is the oil that is in the lamps. And I give a corporate altar, altar call to each and every one of us this morning to come and allow God to pour more oil into our lamps so that we won't run out. I invite everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to come close. I trust this morning that if you're physically able, you'll be coming to the altars because you have a concern that, that you want your lamp to be burning bright. You want oil to be in your lamp. There's been a delay. God hasn't come back yet. So I want to make sure my lamp is, is full. I want to make sure my life is full. I want my cup to be running over. The Spirit of God, because Christmas is coming, and I want Him to take me with me. I wish somebody was speaking other tongues right now. I wish the Holy Ghost would just allow you to just speak in that heavenly language to be renewed in the Spirit right now, holding nothing back from the Spirit, just being sensitive to the move of the Holy Ghost. It's so appropriate. Why don't you reach over to your neighbor, grab him by the hand. Right now, the Holy Ghost moves in Christmas. It's coming. I want my wife to go. I want my son to make it. I want my daughter to make it. I want everybody under the sound of my voice to make it. Would you make sure you got oil in your lamp this morning? I can't give it to you. No one else can give it to you. But our Savior is here this morning and He's just pouring it out upon all flesh. Thank you, Jesus. Got another voice. Oh, that's it. That's it, everybody that knows how to pray. Praying in the house. Everyone talking to Jesus. Oh, I love you, Jesus. That's it, that's it. Go ahead and lift your voices unto the Lord this morning. Christmas is coming. I've got a lot of work to do. I've got a lot of preparations to make. Sleeping shadow. 